so hopefully Shuri will join us also with the video. Uh, Shuri may like to adjust his video. Uh, Jake, um, I think it would be better if you can sit in the way Yamo is sitting or Yaza. Mm -hmm. uh, now you need to have the, the left uh, foot under the calf. Yes, yes, yes. And now the right calf on the thigh of the left leg. Okay, very good. Yes, perfect. Very nice. Very nice. Perfect. Uh, I'm not able to see how does Max uh, sit. Max, can you can you show me your legs? Okay. Yes, I see. I see. No, no, I can see. You're uh, covering them too much with your with your hands. Okay. Um, I see. Uh, it seems like you have your uh, your right foot is. Um, pressed maybe too much you know uh, between the uh, calf and thigh of the left leg what about if you sit like Jake Max, what about, yes, 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 that, that's much better, I see, I see. Just a moment. All right, I think I will have a better internet connection, just a moment. Okay, so
as you're sitting in a comfortable meditation posture with the back erect, side cast down. Let's make the first determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 15 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And with that determination, we can gently lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. Let's allow it to be heavy and changing. We continue to the forehead eyes, nose, lips, chin, cheeks, ears, back of the head, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the head to be heavy. We continue to the neck, shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, tips of fingers, chest, abdomen, back, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be heavy. And changing. We continue to the buttocks, thighs, knees, calves, heels, soles, toes, tips of toes, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be heavy and changing. We continue to the buttocks, thighs, knees, calves, heels, soles, toes, tips of toes. And we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be heavy and changing. And we allow all of this body to be heavy and changing. And observe, watch this freedom we gain.
as we allow the body to be the way it is. And we consider what is the mind doing with this freedom and whether the freedom is peace. And we can share this peace with other living beings. We can start in the room where we are. And we allow all of the beings in this room to enjoy at least as much peace as I am uh, experiencing now. Peace is abs absence of something that's not peaceful. For example, nobody is beating my head with an iron stick now. That means that I am peace in peace in that respect. Nobody is shouting at me, nobody is insulting me now. You're always interested in this now moment. Indeed, nobody is doing those things to me, so what about? If all of us also enjoy this special situation when nobody is scolding me, nobody is blaming me, nobody is shouting at me or insulting me, nobody is harming me. So may all living beings also be as lucky. So we start in our room and we wish, we allow and we wish all beings in our room to be in peace. May all beings in this room be in peace. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace.
May all beings on this planet be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. Now, because the time for the sitting is finished, let's make the last determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, I will always be mindful and shine with loving kindness. From now on, I will always be mindful and shine with loving kindness. From now on, I will always be mindful and chime with loving kindness. And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. can move on to our recitation. Today let's recite in Burmese pronunciation. Alright, so I would like to ask everyone to unmute, keep your hands together show that you're serious when you're taking the three of you just five presets okay very nice so i will tell you yamahang vadami tangvadeta what i say please say like repeat after me and you can then reply ama panti so let's try that together yamaha vadami tangvadeta Aham Bhante Aham Bhante Pitarane Nataha Pien Satilan Pien Satilan Dhamma Yasami Maya Sami No Gahan Katawa No Gahan Katawa Tilan De Tame Bhante Anukampan upadaya. Anukampan upadaya. Duti yampi aham bhante. Duti yampi aham bhante. Titrani nataha. Titrani nataha. Pien satilan dhamma yasami. Pien satilan dhamma yasami. Anaukahan katawa. Anaukahan katawa. Tilan de tame bhante. Tilan de tame bhante. Anukampan upadaya. Anukampan upadaya. 
Tatiyampi aham bhanti Tatiyampi aham bhanti Titrani nataha Titrani nataha Pien satilan dhamma ya sami Pien satilan dhamma ya sami Anaukahan kadawa Anaukahan kadawa Tilan de tame bhanti Anukampan upadaya Anukampan upadaya Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambodhatta Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambodhatta Be careful about the S. Instead of S, we are reading Ta. Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambodhatta Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambodhatta Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambodhatta Bodhantarnangi Sami Dhammantarnangi Sami Tanghantarnangi Sami Duti Yampi Bodhantar Nangi Sami Duti Yampi Bodhantar Nangi Sami Duti yam pitan kantar nangki 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 sami Dati yam pitan kantar nangki sami Taranagamanam paripona Very well. So now come the five precepts. The first one means um, we never kill. Uh, I follow the rule. Of refraining from, uh, of refraining from killing living beings. Panati pada wera mani teka pada tema diami. Aday na dan. Okay, the second precept means I follow the rule of refraining from stealing, from taking what is not given. Adena dana vera mani te ka padantama diyami Ka me tu me sa sa ra Ka me tu me sa sa ra Vera mani te ka padantama diyami Muta wada vera mani te ka padantama diyami Musa wada vera mani te ka padantama diyami Dura me raya misa Pamada tana Vera mani te ka padantama diyami So the third precept means I follow the rule of refraining from sexual misconduct. It means that if you are married uh, with a husband or a wife, then you would not fall in love with anyone else. Mudawara, that's... Uh, uh, I follow the rule of refraining from false speech. It means we never tell lies. And finally, I follow the rule of refraining from 
drinking alcohol and taking drugs. So now I will encourage you everyone to follow, to protect these three refuges and follow the five precepts very well and um, make effort mindfully. And you can then reply, Ama Pante, if you agree with that. So let's try that together. Titarne na tadhain piyan sa tilan dhamman tadukan turakitang katwa appama de na tampa de tham. May you be happy, may you be happy, healthy, and may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Very nice. Thank you very much. So this was very nice. And now uh, I suggest that we look at our notes from chapter, which one was that this time? So um, now we are talking about chapter 15, uh, sports and concussions. So I would like to ask you everyone to raise your hand if you have read chapter 15. Okay, seems like everyone, that's very nice. Uh, yes, you can remove your hands now. Uh, so. Let's look at the chapter 15 right away. Seems like we are missing some people today, right? Uh, Timu, I know he's a little ill, um, so that's why he didn't come. Uh, but, uh, uh -huh, I see Shuri is not here, and Jeffrey, and Albert. Now I remembered his name, Albert. So, um, I see, okay, well, well uh, I'm very happy for all of you who have come. So I would like to ask you uh, to read for me the notes for, for us all. So let's start with Jake. Okay. So I said brain damage can still occur from non-concussive blows to the head if they happen enough times. This means that many children could have undetected brain damage without ever realizing Yes, thank you very much. Max? Um, in chapter 15, it says that concussions can happen anywhere, not just in sports like wrestling, but in sports like hockey, car accidents, wars, and even from severe justice. Part of the reason that adolescents and in particular girls are so susceptible to these injuries is the repeated hits which cause heavy damage, which occur in everyday life. Okay, that was quite long. Can you summarize for us what was the meaning? Um, concussions can happen anywhere, and usually they are caused by like repeated damage, which is like ignored usually. By repeated damage, which is like ignored. Oh, I see. Which is ignored. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sure. Uh, the damage to the brain is also not easy to detect because it is not. It is usually not structural, rather it's cellular, cellular, and yet severe enough to interrupt normal functioning and cause physical and cognitive cognitive symptoms. Yes, thank you. I'm sure you have some. You have a better microphone. Do you have an external microphone, or how do you how do you do it? Now I see your sound is very good. No, I have. Uh, it, it goes through my Mac, my computer. Okay, very yeah. nice. So your Mac has a nice microphone. Very good. Yeah, sir. Huh? Oh, I was unmuted this whole time. Uh. Among among high school sports with male and female participation, soccer, lacrosse, basketball, baseball, softball, and gymnastics, girls sustain concussions nearly 70% more often than boys, even though boys participate in these sports at a rate slightly higher than girls. 
That's wonderful. You've just read the note that I wanted to read. So what am I going to do with that? Football players routinely hit one another with forces in excess of 100 Gs and 150 G hits are not unheard of. In fact, Purdue researchers recently evaluated a high school football player they estimated uh, to have received a blow to the head that carried the force of 289 Gs. That's nearly a hundred times more than the sustained G-forces associated with a shuttle lunge. And yet this high school player had no outward signs of, con of a concussion, nor did he report any symptoms. All it takes are repetitive strikes of modern intensity. In other words, thousands of kids playing contact sports who have never had to sit out a game because of concussion could be at risk of brain damage. Did any one of you watch uh, a Roy Benerol? What's that? Roy Benrock. Uh, Roy Benrock's uh, lecture. If you did, can you please uh, raise your hand? Uh, did you know that I have invited you to to watch it? If you if you do, please raise your hand. Okay, Jake and Max know. All right, the others don't know. I'm sure, you you didn't know that I invited you to watch that lecture. Uh huh. It was in the Viber uh, in the Viber group. I think already since Monday. Please, everybody, check the Viber group at least like on Wednesday or Thursday, you know, uh, someday so that you know what's going on. Otherwise, it's a little difficult. It's a beautiful lecture. It's well done. He is a, I don't know who, what he is. He's a medical doctor. That's true. But I, I wonder whether he's a professor or what. But he's very, uh, very skillful. Uh, we went, uh, we were watching his course on suicide course on preventing suicide how to help others to uh, prevent uh, to uh, prevent uh, uh, you know suicide so uh, there was a very nice course three a three lectures course each lecture about 20 minutes we did that about I don't know six months ago so uh, Roy Benerock is uh, is very good a uh, good professor all right so uh, from my side it's everything i'm extremely tired so uh, i'm uh, barely uh, withstand uh, barely you know keeping myself awake at this moment we have now 9 40 you know in the evening but uh, last night i actually didn't i was not allowed to lie down when a monk uh, sleeps under the same roof with the ladies he must not lie down or a monastic rule is broken. So I was sleeping under the same roof with ladies because there were some difficulties with arrangement from my, from my place. I was in Singapore for a visit. And um, so I slept about four hours and I didn't uh, lie down for even for those four hours. So I'm very tired uh, this time. Uh, I feel we did like the main point that, that I wanted to do anyway. Does anyone have any questions? Anything you would like to say? Nobody, everything's fine. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's continue next week with uh, lecture 16 and that's crime and punishment. And let's read only the first 10 pages. I think it has about 18, uh, 18 pages in my uh, in my version, I will actually tell you until which portion exactly uh, shall we read that. So let's read it until the quote from 1966. So uh, there is a quote uh, uh, in my version after about 10 pages. You will see there a quote from July 31, 1966. It says, the day before the massacre, read. And then uh, there is this quote. So let's read it until that quote. All right. Please, can you try to find it? 
it's about 10 pages beyond but maybe 8 maybe 7 maybe 12 Yaza yeah, see if you can find it for others others please take your your book to see if you can also find it so Yaza yeah, have you found it yes can you tell us what's the page in the book the page where is the quote you need to find it again I think that's on 264 okay nice so I have it on 210 I have it on 210 so you see I'm very much my paging is very different so uh, 264 uh, is the page where you get this quote so just read that quote and you can uh, take a pause there and then we would uh, keep the remaining portion for uh, yet another week uh, there is no reason to be in a hurry important is to go a little every time we meet so thank you very much everyone for coming may you be happy may you be healthy and may you be successful in everything you do Everyone, please unmute and say goodbye to Seattle. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. Nice, thank you. Nice, thank you.